Church, we're so excited that you've joined us here today for Sunday Morning Church. And we're so excited to see what the Lord has in store for you today. Now, before we get into our service, let us say the Lord's Prayer to start us off today. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, we've got an amazing service in store for you today. We've got some dynamic word and some awesome worship. So let us now turn to the worship team as they lead us into worship, as we unite our hearts, unite our faith, and deploy the most powerful weapon that we have, which is God's praises. Morning church, God is good. God is good. All the time, God is good. Thank you for attending church today. Let us prepare our hearts. Let's prepare a grateful heart as we sing and worship the Lord.
Let's give him a clap offering. We're warming up. We're warming up. Let us not be stingy with our praises. Sing with me, Father. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Clap with me. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Project. We praise your name. We pray. And we sing with you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh Lord. I dance in your praise. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. We praise. Your church will praise your name. We sing in your name. Hallelujah. We praise. Let us raise a hallelujah in the middle of it all. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy, I raise a hallelujah with me, church. louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a
King is alive. Let's give him a clap offering. Hallelujah, Lord. We are so happy that in the middle of our persecution, Father God, we can sing a little louder because you have given us grace, Lord, and you have given us your name, which is the name of our names. Let us close our eyes, church, as we enter into worship.
desperate for you. Desperate for you. I surrender.
Hey church, we hope you are staying safe and staying connected with one another. Even though we are not able to gather together in person right now, we want to encourage you to connect with us through our different avenues. If you have any prayer requests or in need of a person to talk to, simply contact us using the details on the screen to get in touch. On the screen are our online account details which you can use to tithe. Now, let's prepare our hearts for the Word and what the Lord has in store for us today. Praise the Lord, Church, and a very warm welcome to each one of you, especially to those who have joined us online, wherever you have joined us from, we welcome you, and we know the presence of God is meeting you right where you are. Well, this morning, let's dive in right into the Word. Our foundational Scripture is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. Shall we read together? At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant, David my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this great people of yours. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus and through your precious blood, we are in your presence this morning thanking you for the word that's coming before your precious people. Let it indeed be my mouth, but your words. Let your anointing flow in this place, uncompromised, unhindered. Let minds be renewed, lives be transformed, the body of Christ edified, and the name of Jesus glorified. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. And everybody said... Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, the title of this message, beloved, is Ask for Wisdom and Understanding Heart. Ask for Wisdom and Understanding Heart. See, this year, God has given us a theme. It is an year of being prayerful, being vigilant, and being, and being grateful. And so perhaps you are in that season. Maybe you are at crossroads. Maybe you have been, you know, battling or being challenged for a, a long season of time and you've come to that place and you think, you know what, I'm tired, I'm weary. Um, I don't know what to ask for. Or perhaps you've just entered into a new season and there's something new and you need God's guidance and wisdom, what to do next, how to move forward. So you could be, you know, at a different season right now. But whatever it is, I think we all need continual guidance and wisdom and God's perception into the next that is in store for us. Amen. And so this message is coming your way. Through the life of King Solomon, we will learn 
few nuggets here that will help us in our asking and our seeking of God. You see, King Solomon had come to a season in his life where he was enthroned on the throne as the king of Israel. So this is an open invite. You know, God appears to Solomon in a dream and says to Solomon, ask, what shall I give you? An open invitation to King Solomon from God to ask whatever he desired. My question to you this morning is, Have you ever wondered if you were presented with such an opportunity, what would you ask God for? Whatever you're facing right now, whatever season you are in right now, just imagine if you were given that opportunity and God appeared to you in that dream, what would you be asking for right now? Well, let's look at King Solomon's response. In verse, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6, he says, this is what Solomon says. And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant, David my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness to kindness for him, and you have given him a son to sit on this throne as it is this day. Verse 7, he says, Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. You know, all the way long, the emphasis from King Solomon to God is you. Solomon recognises and acknowledges the fact that it is not his ability or his talents or connections or influence that has put him on that throne but it is purely the hand of God. He recognises that God, it is because of your goodness, your kindness, your mercy that you have shown to me and to my father that today I am sitting on this throne as the King of Israel. And so he's not putting himself, you know, he doesn't let the title get to his head like, well, now I am the next king. No, no, no. He comes to that place of acknowledging and recognition that you know what, this promotion that has come in my life, it has come from God, not from my own accord. He gives God all the honour, the glory, and knows that it is only Him and Him alone that has put Him on that throne. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 75, verses 6 to 7, and I'm reading the Passion Translation, this I know, the favour that brings promotion, And power doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where favour rests. He anoints one for greatness and brings another down to his knees. In other words, promotion doesn't come from east, west or south, but it only comes from God alone. Another question I want to ask you this morning is do you recognise the source of your blessings? Can you see in your own life, in your own journey, the blessings, the opportunities, the promotion, the good things, the benefits that we enjoy, the kindness and the goodness of God? Do we pause enough? Do we stop enough and thank Him and acknowledge that God, it is only because of you, every good thing in my life, every benefit, every blessing that I'm enjoying today, Lord, it is is because of you. Do you know, beloved, I believe the reason why Solomon could recognise that he's enthroned on, the, on, on that throne was because he would hear his father David since he was a little boy, giving God praise and glory for everything. Do you remember Psalms 103 where David is saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and bless all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases, who redeems my life from destruction, who crowns me with loving kindness, and satisfies my mouth with good things so my youth is renewed like an eagle. You know, can you imagine King Solomon as a little boy hearing that his father David is always thanking and praising God? 
You know, being the ear where we are need to be more grateful, more thankful. Sometimes it is important that whenever you come to that juncture and you don't know what to do next, always look back and say, God, everything thus so far good in my life is only because of you. And I believe, you know, we, uh, as, as King David influenced King Solomon, I believe that when we recognize that in our own life and our own acknowledging of God and His goodness, our gratitude can really influence and shape the next generation as well. Because I believe that's why King Solomon, instead of being prideful and arrogant, you know, in humility, he recognizes that God, it is because of you. But look at the second part of that. And then he goes on to say in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 7, Now, o Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father, David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. What does that mean? You know, when he says little child, what it actually symbolizes is not as in terms of ears, but there's a spirit of humility, a childlike approach and faith. You know, he admits to his inexperience. He admits to his uh, limitations. He admits that, you know, he's flawed, he's not perfect. But the need of him to rely on a greater and a higher power than him, church, you know, when we come to that place of recognition that God, you have given me all good things. But you know what? Maybe it's in a new role that you are in. Maybe it's your family situation. Maybe it's your marriage, your finance, your health, your ministry, your job, your career, whatever it is that you're facing in this season. You know, when we come to that place of admission that I don't know how to go out and come in. You know, it, in the natural, it may seem so weak, when we tell people, when we tell God, I don't know what to do, but let me encourage you this morning and remind you that that is the most powerful place you can be at. You know, we are learning from King Solomon's life here. Although a king, he doesn't let the title or the position get to his head, but he comes to that place. In fact, uh, this new promotion, this new place, this new prom uh, position actually makes him realize that I'm in need of even more of God in this season. Perhaps somebody's, you know, been uh, promoted in this season. Perhaps you have got something greater to do. Well, this message is coming your way that instead of, you know, taking it all on yourself, when we come to that powerful place of submission, of yielding, of acknowledging that God, I don't know how to go out and come in. Let me encourage you and remind you once again that that is one of the most powerful place you can be in. You know, the third thought I want to share with you this morning is, it says, so it was not position versus posture. What do I mean? So it was not the position of King Solomon on his throne or the title or his office that was impressive, but the posture of his heart. Look at it. The way he leaned and leaped towards God is what pleased the Father's heart. Because the Bible says when Solomon asked for wisdom and understanding heart, the Bible says it pleased the Father. Solomon recognized that he could not do this on his own, simply that he needed God's help. Are you seeking God's help this morning? Have you come to that place of knowing that I cannot do it without good? I'm telling you that like Solomon, we can also ask. You know, it shows the posture of our heart. It, it has got nothing to do with what we know, what we don't know, but it really shows the attitude of our heart. You know, Solomon acknowledges in verse 8, it says, And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. This is important for us, beloved, because you see, number one, Solomon recognizes that it is God's assignment. See, he says, God's people, these are your people. In other words, 
God's people, God's assignment, His task, His calling, His purpose, He's chosen. And Solomon understands that, you know, the people that was given under His domain, they did not belong to Him. Firstly, they belong to God. And so maybe whatever you've been given, perhaps you've never seen it that way, this Word is coming your way to remind you that whatever God has given you, you know, this breath of life, our relationships, our marriages, you know, the spouse that we have, the children that we have, the job, the ability to create wealth, all the gifts, the talents, the grace upon our life, you know, the, the, the business that we have, the ministry, everything has been given by God. And so Solomon recognises that. When we recognise that, I believe it will impact us to come to that place of awe and submission to God that, Lord, let me not touch this without You, without Your guidance. I don't want to lead these people without You. That's what Solomon is saying. And number two, he recognises that they are huge in numbers. It's overwhelming. They say, who is able to lead your great people without you? I mean, how can I do this, God? This calling, this assignment, this task you have given me. And how can I do this without you? Therefore, give me an understanding heart. Church, are you recognising the same? You know, when you do recognise, it makes it so much easier to humble ourselves, to submit to God, to yield to Him, to ask of Him, to involve Him in all aspects of our decision-making. The other thing I want to tell you about King Solomon is the intent of asking. I mean, he's a king. He's in the most powerful position. So why did he ask? Why did he ask of wisdom? What was the reason behind that asking? See, we can ask of God, but let's get our motive, our intent of our heart right. Look at King Solomon. He says in verse 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? You see, Solomon's intent of asking for wisdom or an understanding heart was not for himself to become rich or famous or more powerful, but it was simply so that he could serve God's people with God's mind, God's heart and God's purpose so that he could render justice. For his role as the king now would bring all sorts of people and matters before his throne. And so that every matter that was presented to King Solomon's throne, I believe that King Solomon was trying to to uh, taking it to his king's throne. I'll say that again. So I believe that King Solomon, every matter that came to his throne, He was taking it to the king's throne. You see, the reason that he asked for wisdom and an understanding heart was not even for his own benefit. Because when we recognise that blessings and good things and the assignment, the task, everything that has been given under our care has been given by God. And when we ask God, how do we take care of it? What do we do? See, the motive and the reason of asking is so that God, your mind, your will and your purposes be established on earth as it is in heaven. And that's why King Solomon asked for wisdom. It was not for his personal benefit. It was not for his personal glory, but it was purely that he could honour that throne that God had put him on. You know, when we ask of God, when we involve Him, and we want to know His perception that His will be done. Do you know, people of God, that is one of the most highest way we can honour God. That God, we respect what You've given me. We honour what You've given me. God, I dare not do this in my own ability. I need You this morning. I need You to go on into the next season. I need You to solve this. I cannot do this on my own because I recognise I'm limited, but You are limitless. So as I 
finish here this morning, I want to assure you and encourage you that it is not too late. Perhaps you've come to a place and you're saying, yes, but you know, how can I ask? I'm too much of a, I've done too much of a mess. My situation is too hard. Can I leave you with this thought? In James 1.5, the Bible says, if any one of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. So remember this morning that the God that you are serving, the Father that loves you in heaven, He's a liberal giver. He's not stingy, but He's abundant in His ways. You know, He doesn't look at you and say, I'm going to give it to you this much or give you a little bit of wisdom. No, no, no. Number one, I want you to be assured of that your Father in heaven is a liberal giver. He's so abundant in mercy, in kindness, in goodness. He's so overflowing with goodness. And secondly, God does not give give wisdom with reproach, which means He doesn't mock you. He doesn't taunt you. He doesn't belittle you. He doesn't make fun of you and says, oh, well, now you have come. Whoa, you've made so much mess. Do you really deserve my answers? No, no, people may do that to us, but I wanna assure you, God in heaven, our heavenly Father, He's so loving, He's so kind. In fact, He has given us an open invitation. He says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So beloved, I encourage you this morning that in both God, in whatever you're facing, if Solomon being the king, so high and mighty in his position, if he could humble, he could come to that place and say, I'm like a little child. How much more should we do that? And we all know that King Solomon was one of the most richest king that ever lived, that under his domain, that was peace. So I encourage you this morning, get with God. He's more than willing to shower His wisdom and His Understand, he, you know, he will give you an understanding heart. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, as this message has come before your precious people, I pray, Lord, that you will encourage them. It will stir them to come into that place of surrender, come into that place of yielding, come into that place of submission, Lord, that they will involve you like King Solomon asked of you, Lord, from that place of realisation that all things have been given from you, all good things, all benefits, all blessings are from you. So I pray now, Lord, that as we have heard this message. Encourage your people. Let there be hope stirred that it's not too late and that you're a God who doesn't give with reproach, but you are abundant in your nature. So we give you praises, glory and honour, Lord. Keep your people safe. I cover them under your blood. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. And everybody said, Amen, amen, amen. Well, what is an understanding heart? You know, the Bible says that God gave Solomon, he asked for wisdom and God gave him an understanding heart. So next week, we are going to see what does it mean to have an understanding heart and we will see the nature and the value of godly wisdom. Till then, stay blessed and have a blessed week. Thank you once again for joining us here this morning. I do hope that the Word has touched and transformed your life. So just before we let you go, let's say the declaration for 2022. 2022 is my year of devoting myself to prayer and being watchful and thankful. The grace of endurance and persistence in prayer and praying in the Spirit is increasing in my life and my spirit is overpowering my flesh. I am vigilant and watchful as a lion ready to roar with authority and power. The spirit of grace and supplication is empowering me to surrender to the perfect will of God, propelling me to my destiny. This year I am anxious for nothing. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, my requests are being made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding is guarding my heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I declare I will see the effective, fervent prayers of the righteous, releasing heaven on earth, manifesting God's supernatural power and glory with signs, wonders and miracles in and through my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us once again this morning. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe on all of our social media. And I do hope that we see you again next week, the same time, same place. Stay blessed.